engineer doesn't really cover it anymore. I'm software, hardware, everything engineer. That's, that's pretty amazing. If you would tell me this two years ago, I would completely laugh in your face. So I only, only wanted to do high level stuff, and now today I'm kernel hacking, uh, cross compiling, and I even have a breadboard and I can make LEDs blink. So now everything's complete. I live in Amsterdam, I work for Delnor, a big Norwegian telco. They pay me to work on open source software, and I'm currently working on Mozilla products. Now, today I want to talk to you about um, a new mobile operating system, Yon OS. <laughs> <laughs> and, and our tagline is turn your smartphone into an IoT board. Smartphone IoT board? That actually makes sense. Yon OS is an alternative operating system for smartphones. It's a fork of Firefox OS, it's completely open source. And the idea is that it runs on your existing mobile phone. So it, it's separate, it's actually a, an operating system you install over your current operating system. After that, the operating system is gone. You can run on Firefox OS and Android phones. And the caveat is that it runs without a screen. It is meant to install it on your phone, then disconnect the screen, and then have a little chipboard that you take in that program. So in that, in that sense, it's a bit of a competitor to Arduino, a bit of a competitor to, to Raspberry Pi, but there's one extremely big advantage. If currently I want to add connectivity to my IoT board, say I want to buy a GSM shield, I have to shell out, and I look this up, for a 2G board with no antenna, 91 Singaporean dollars. For me, this is, this is insane. If I build an IoT device, I want to deploy it wherever I can. I want to, if I want to see weather conditions, I'm just like put it somewhere and I'll leave it. And for that, I need connectivity. But none of these vendors solve this problem. Why do I need to shell out 91 Singapore dollars for just a GSM module? While in India or Philippines, I can currently buy this phone, Firefox OS, full smartphone, for the freaking price of $44. Yeah? Full thing. And this is even worse because 3G shields for Arduino are even more expensive. 4G doesn't even exist. A smartphone is, in any sense, a way better investment than your normal IoT development kit. So that was the premise that we started with. Like, how can we reuse your mobile phone and make this into an IoT device? So Yon OS, the thing that we're going to run on this, is essentially it's Firefox OS with the UI stripped off, because we don't need that. And that also solves the main problem of these super cheap phones, is that they run slow. Well, we don't care. We don't do layouting. Just JavaScript engine. And a bunch of new low-level APIs. File system, uh, GPIO support, so you can make LEDs blink. Uh, that's exactly what I just said. Uh, and it basically works like this. We have the mobile phone. We have the Linux kernel, which runs on top of that, and we're an open source kernel. On top of that, we have Gecko, the render engine, JavaScript engine uh, of Mozilla. And on top of that, we have an HTML5 UI. Now, because everything in our is implemented in HTML5, that means that the Gecko JavaScript engine has bindings to everything on the phone, from calling to messaging, etc., etc., etc. So, if we remove the HTML5 UI, we basically end up with a mobile phone that just runs bare bones Gecko, just a JavaScript engine with a bunch of bindings already there. All right. So now, you know what Yanoas is? It's Firefox OS without the UI. But how are you going to make this do an IoT thing? Because it's, it's a mobile phone, a full thing. So, getting started. Flashing the other on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow these simple steps, then this will not happen to you. <laughs> at the moment, for uh, four mobile phones and the Raspberry Pi, we have builds available at yonos.io. It's on the download page. Uh, there's also instructions how to flash it on a bunch of phones like the Nexus 4, Nexus 5, uh, Galaxy S2. And after you flash it, it's just running one simple script. If the device is supported, you end up with this. This is your basis. It's the absolute minimum thing. It's just a logo on the screen. 
And we can get rid of that because who needs a screen anyway? Um, so, get out your tools. Actually, when I started the project, I did not own a screwdriver. So, even for someone who's a complete hardware new, this is completely possible. Um, you use a screwdriver to just unscrew the casing of your phone, and then you get presented with something like this. This is the heart of your whole smartphone. It's freaking tiny. It's less than the size of a credit card. Everything else in your phone is just the screen and battery. Complete computation unit. This phone actually is dual core. It has a gigabyte of memory. It has four gigabytes of internal storage. A fuck ton of sensors. Great. What we have here is SIM card slot, SD card slot, uh, touch screen, uh, uh, screen connector, camera, flashlight even, touch screen connector, all great. And because it's a small one, there's an external antenna that we also need to. So we, we end up with this. This is your new IoT board. It used to be a phone. It's incredibly small. Less than the size of my credit card. For most things, like booting, you need a battery. So if you want that, just solder your current phone battery or any battery that does 3.7 volts to it. A little bit of soldering wire. It's pretty easy. Or if you go full on, because we were making a device based on this chipset, we created like a custom PCB to connect these things. All right, so, about 10 minutes, gonna be very, very fast. Gonna continue full speed. So let's do a Hello World application here. So if you wanna do Hello World, you get out your phone, flash your OS, and they can clone our base repository. The base repository does a whole bunch of things for you. Wi-Fi management, 3G management, 2G management, so the moment you put in a SIM card, everything just magically works. Plus you have access to all the APIs, all the centers, etc. Then you just write some JavaScript. So let's say you've just done this, let's write an application that sends a text message the moment that you connect to the voice network. In this case, we can just get a reference to our SIM card. As you can see, because Firefox OS already did this, because Firefox OS launched in 30 countries, because Firefox OS fixed all these problems, this is going to work in any network. Because if it didn't work on some networks, we would have found out. No, it's high, it's high quality, it's well tested APIs, high quality. So get SIM 1. The moment that we're connected to the voice network, simple event listener, that is the moment that we can just say, send the text message. In this case, fill in the number, fill the message, and then we return a promise-like object that either says, yes, this works, or this didn't work. Simple, 15 lines of code, and you have everything working. Get the board, pull in your SIM card, and go. Some other things you can do with this, this is all bundled in the default repository. It's already in the examples folder, you can just do that. A doorbell. Why don't I make a doorbell out of your phone? You know what would be cool? If my doorbell was not a thing that I actually had to press the button and wave it, wave your hand in front of it. How can we do that? Well, a mobile phone is a proximity sensor. You know, it's the thing that like shuts down your screen on and you hold it against your ear. So if you listen to events like that, find a Bluetooth speaker to it, now when you go to my doorpost, you can just <laughs> and I can play sound on Bluetooth to indicate that people are coming. It's again a couple of lines of code. It's already in our repository, so I'm gonna skip over it pretty quickly. Um, another use case that I that I built is this is my group of friends. Very nice at a rock concert in a uh, rock festival in France. And in the middle you see a very rad boy, dangerous looking guy. This is Brian. Brian has the little tendency that um, he always gets lost if we're on a trip. <laughs> Brian also has a tendency to always text his girlfriend while he's out and drunk, so his phone is always empty as well. Problem if you're in Warsaw or in Paris. Now what can we build on this little chipboard with connectivity built in? The Brian Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it connected over 2G. Listen for push messages. When one comes in, do geolocation. All standard web APIs. Get the data and send it back. And this is actually how it looks at this moment. <laughs> All right, so this is a short overview of Yano OS. This was a bunch of the demos that you can do. These are all bundled in repository. So if you have an old phone that you don't use anymore, if you want to reuse this, if you need a cheap IoT board, go take a look at it. And with that, I will 